Jesus is all I need. As we look at our lives and some of the struggles, challenges in our lives today, it's good to be reminded that Jesus Christ is all we need. He is truth. Truth today is a very rare commodity in our world, even in our nation. We need the truth. We have that truth in Christ. And when we have him, we have it all. We have it all. For time and for eternity, we have it all. We're going to be looking at this idea of truth as we go to the Word, but we're going to look at it in a little bit different way. We're going to begin with a text that many of us will indicate that it is a familiar text, and we will quite readily think that this is going to be a message on giving and the importance to give. Look with me at the text from Luke chapter 21, verses 1 through 4. Luke chapter 21, verses 1 through 4. And Jesus looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury, and he saw a poor widow putting in two small copper coins. And he said, Truly I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all of them, for they all, out of their surplus, put into the offering, but she, out of her poverty, put in all that she had to live on. Now this text is usually preached as an encouragement to be good givers, but I am going to submit to you that this is not what Jesus intends with this text. In fact, Jesus has a completely different concern in speaking about this poor widow that he saw putting a couple of copper coins into a receptacle in the treasury of the temple. And Jesus, far from emphasizing a stewardship message, is rather somewhat angry about what he sees happening when a poor woman gives all that she has and has nothing left. There are some questions that I think maybe are coming to your mind right now as I'm talking, as I'm introducing the message. And I have questions too. For example, why is this little text here, four verses, about this poor woman giving to the temple treasury, why is this text sandwiched between two judgment texts? If you go back into Luke chapter 20, the last part of it, you'll find Jesus brings a harsh word of judgment to the religious leaders, the scribes. And we're going to look at it in just a moment. And then right after the text in Luke 21 verses 1 through 4 about the woman giving her all, there comes a judgment text where Jesus speaks of the fact that one day the very stones of the magnificent temple will be torn down. Not one of them will remain in place. So something's going on here. We can ignore the chapter heading, Luke 21, because that's not in the original. The chapter headings are by uh, uh, the translators. So we just go from a judgment text, the end of chapter 20, to this 
bit of an interlude with the poor woman and then we come back to great judgment about how the Lord is going to judge the temple, the temple uh, ministry so-called, and of course one day he will bring great judgment upon the world as well. In fact, he may even be bringing something of that judgment or introducing that judgment to our world even now. There is another question that might be raised before we go to the text, and that is, is this account of the woman giving to the temple treasury teaching us how we are to give? And the answer is no. God never tells us in his word to give everything so that we have nothing left. In fact, John MacArthur in his commentary uh, on this passage, one that I want to mention as something that has helped me in studying this passage, MacArthur says it's ridiculous to think that God would have anyone give all that they have, all the money they have, to God's work, if you will, and not have anything left over. That doesn't make sense. There has to be something to live on. And of course, we realize from the scripture that we are to be givers. We are to give with grateful, thankful hearts as unto the Lord. And because of what the Lord has done for us, our hearts are full. We give in appreciation for what the Lord has given us. We are to give with cheerful hearts, and we are to give lavishly. We are not to be stingy. So we know that from all over in the Bible, that we are to be good givers. It's an indication of our relationship with Jesus Christ. So we're not denying the encouragement to give, but what I'm saying is that this passage with the poor widow and her giving is not teaching us how to give. There's something else going on, and we want to look at it now as we come to the text. And I would first offer that there is a challenge, actually two challenges that we're going to see. The first challenge to us is beware false religious leaders. Beware false religious leaders. In other words, we must be discerning people. We must pursue truth at every turn. Now, Jesus, in the last part of chapter 20, notice what we read there beginning in verse 45, and while all the people were listening, he said to the disciples, beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and love respectful greetings in the marketplaces and chief seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets, who devour widows' houses, note that, who devour widows' houses and for appearance sake offer long prayers these will receive greater condemnation. Observe here that he says of these scribes who appeared to be very religious. They had their long robes, they offered long prayers, and the common people, seeing these scribes and Pharisees and others parading around in their holiness, shall we say, thought they could be trusted and listened to their teaching and tried to obey all their laws, their man-made laws and traditions that they had handed down. But Jesus challenges them. They are false leaders. They devour widows' houses. We know that in Jesus' day, women were viewed as second-class citizens. It was the Christian faith that came in the early church that lifted women up to the proper place of equality with men. 
But in Jesus' day, women were viewed as second-class citizens, and widows, of course, are women, and according to the scribes and Pharisees, widows were under the judgment of God. Why? Because they were widows. They were not blessed. So these uh, women could not win. They were women and then widows as well. And widows had very little. Widows without any family had, had to struggle for any kind of help, any kind of assistance. And Jesus says to these scribes, you have your religious attire and you offer your long prayers and you look so good and yet you devour widows' houses. It seems that these scribes and, and others in leadership, because they were viewed as holy people, people thought they could be trusted. So widows who had no families Anyone to help would often turn to these leaders for help with managing their lives and taking care of what little money they had. And Jesus says, you do that kind of thing. You devour widows' houses. You literally eat them up. You devour what little sustenance they have to feather your own nests. So this is a striking word that Jesus gives to the religious leaders about how they treated widows. Now if you keep a place there and you turn with me to Matthew 15, this was the passage we read earlier in the service, Matthew chapter 15, beginning verse 1. Then some Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat bread. Here, these Pharisees and scribes were concerned that their traditions be followed. And they looked with disdain upon Jesus and his disciples. But notice how Jesus answers them in verse 3 and the following verses. Jesus answered and said to them, why do you yourselves transgress the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? For God said, Honor your father and mother, and he who speaks evil of father and mother is to be put to death. But you say, Whoever says to his father or mother, Whatever I have that would have helped you has been given to God. He is not to honor his father or his mother. And by this you invalidated the word of God for the sake of your tradition. You hypocrites, rightly did Isaiah prophesy of you, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far away from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the precepts of men. These scribes, these Pharisees said, uh, we, we can't help our parents. We can't help our families because all that we have is dedicated to God. We give to God. We give to God, and we, we can't be concerned with, with helping even our own family members. And Jesus challenged them. You're hypocrites. You keep the money for yourselves and for your so-called religious activities when people are hurting. And God's heart is always for hurting people. God's heart is always for the poor. We find it throughout the pages of God's Word. He has a special love for the poor. So you see here, the religious leaders abused poor people, would not help. And now here's a poor widow that Jesus sees who is giving her last two copper coins. The two together would amount to about 1 64th of a denarius. A denarius was a day's wage for a laborer. Very small amount, 
but that's all she had. In fact, the text indicates here that she was poor and she became even poorer as she gave her last two coins. She was poor, she struggled, but after giving her last coins, she was now destitute and would likely be a beggar. Beware false leaders. Beware of those who fleece the flock. There are people today with huge ministries. Some of them, some of them, not all, but some who say they have the truth. They're the only ones that have the truth. And they beg for money. And many people give uh, to those ministries which are nothing more than making these people rich, very rich, with several homes, fancy cars, even jet planes. There was one ministry that has been discredited and no longer on the airwaves, where a man emphasized, you send your, your prayer requests to me and I'll pray for them and I'll bring the Holy Spirit to bear on your prayer needs. Just send some money along with that and I'll pray. And when he was discredited, the authorities found that there was a huge pile of unopened prayer requests, letters from well-meaning people. Oh, he'd taken the money out, but those requests hadn't been opened, hadn't been looked at. I think of a pastor I just read in another country who has offered to his congregation pens. We've been giving out pens at Helmer. We haven't been selling them. And I haven't said to you what this pastor said to his congregation. Pastor said, I have anointed pens. And for a price, you can buy one of these pens. It was a pretty good price. And when you get these pens now, you give them to your students. Students don't have to study. They just use these anointed pens and take the test and they'll always pass. They'll always pass. Just use the anointed pens. I wish that guy was around when I was in school. <laughs> We're giving pens out. He was selling pens and feathering his own nest once again. And well-meaning people, not discerning, not in the scriptures, trusted this charlatan. That's what Jesus is talking about here when he challenges the Pharisees, the scribes, in terms of what they were doing in devouring widows' houses. Beware false religious leaders. But also, second challenge here, beware false religious systems. Beware false religious systems. As we go to our main text here, Luke 21, and Jesus looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw a poor widow putting in two small copper coins. And he said, truly I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all of them. For they all out of their surplus put in the offering. For she out of her poverty put all that she had to live on. The religious system took her last couple of coins. There was not a concern to minister to her. Instead, that's all she had. And it could well have been that she had been influenced by the leaders of the temple, scribes, Pharisees, teachers, others, that she thought by giving her last, she would somehow gain salvation, 
or she would have healing for her body, or perhaps she would gain prosperity and no longer have to be living in poverty. So she gave. Well, we never give to get. That's not the proper motivation. We give out of joy in the Lord what he's provided for us. But she had received teaching from those in authority over her that she could give, perhaps to get. And that's not how it works. She would not get salvation by simply giving something. She would not get healing or prosperity by giving. That's not how it works. And Jesus, as MacArthur indicates, he was, he was angry as he saw a religious system taking the last coins of a poverty-stricken woman when the religious system, if it was a true system, should be reaching out and helping that person, lifting up that person, caring for that person. But instead, it's taking from one who needed those coins. Beware. False religious systems. And the couple of verses we read earlier also in James chapter 1. Look with me at it. James 1, 26, 27. If anyone thinks himself to be religious and yet does not bridle his tongue but deceives his own heart, this man's religion is worthless. And then note verse 27. Pure and undefiled religion in the sight of our God and Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The religious system made money off of sincere people who thought the system would help them. We don't have to go too far back in history. Go back just 500 years to the time of the Reformation and Martin Luther. Martin Luther stood against an entire church, called that church to Reformation, even revival. Why? Because the church the world church at that time was asking people to purchase what they called indulgences. An indulgence was something given from the church, a paper, if you will, that would indicate that all your sins are forgiven because you've purchased the indulgence. You, you have bought it. And because you bought this indulgence, all your sins are forgiven, or you can purchase indulgences for your loved ones, even for those who have died. You can buy these indulgences, which will provide for you full forgiveness. And the common people did that. Who wouldn't to have forgiveness of sins and then to be able to purchase forgiveness for others, even those of your loved ones who have died and may be suffering in what they call purgatory. And purgatory is not biblical, nothing to that, but that's part of the church system in that day. The religious system was false. And Luther spoke out against it to where he said, I am captive to the Word of God. I'm captive to the Word of God. I will not recant on all I've taught, all I've written. I've written the truth, so help me before the Lord God. And here I stand. I cannot do otherwise. 
then proclaim the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That full forgiveness is found in the cross and not in an indulgence. Full forgiveness is found having been paid for in full by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Forgiveness is not for sale. It's been provided freely through the act of supreme divine love, God's love at Calvary, at the cross. Beware, false religious systems that fleece the flock, they don't feed the flock. Jesus judged that. They devour widows' houses. So it's no wonder, right after our text here in Luke 21, starting in verse 5, Jesus says to his disciples, as they were talking about the temple, this woman had been giving to the temple treasury. While some were talking about the temple, that it was adorned with beautiful stones and votive gifts, notice what Jesus said, verse 6, As for these things which you are looking at, the days will come in which there will not be left one stone upon another, which will not be torn down. Here's the judgment. There was judgment upon the scribes, the end of Luke 20, who devour women's houses, widows' houses. Then there's the poor widow giving to this religious system that was not of the Lord, was just of men and men's lusts. And then we see when Jesus talks about the judgment on the temple, the judgment that would come on the temple a few years after Jesus, 70 AD, and of course the judgment that will come upon this world when the Lord comes. So we have here abuse in the name of God. That's a terrible thing when precious souls are led astray or their money, their properties are taken by religious charlatans who use the Bible oftentimes to promote their own ends. You and I must be discerning, loved ones, because we live in a day when there is much false theology false teaching. Our teaching has to come from the book, the Word of God, and be interpreted by the book, and be taught in the power of the Holy Spirit by the Holy Spirit. This is a warning, really, a warning that people can be exploited, defenseless people, like this poor widow who didn't have an attorney, who didn't have anyone to plead her case, but Jesus saw her and knew what was happening. And Jesus would minister to her, I'm sure. Beware. This text about a widow giving money is not to be something that motivates to us to give our all in terms of our money and property to something. Rather, it is to warn us that we need to be discerning and realize that truth 
is rare today. And we need the truth. And as long as we have the resources as a church, as a people, we are to be about concern for the poor, the needy, spiritually, materially, physically, in every way. We are to have a heart for people because our God has a heart for them. Jesus, we're told, look upon the crowds one time, and he, he felt compassion for the people because they were like sheep without a shepherd, wandering around, hurting, feeble, being abused and used by religious people who should have known better. This passage of the poor widow should challenge us that we should be concerned for our poor widows and widowers and orphans and people down and out and for people who need Jesus. And perhaps Jesus they'll see is the Jesus in you and me as we minister to people in his name. Beware. False religious leaders. Beware false religious systems. There was a man who found in a barn that he had purchased an old chest, and he was intrigued by that chest. He opened it, and he found in it an old violin in perfect condition. It was wrapped, it was protected. And he pulled out that violin, and he couldn't believe his eyes because it said Stradivarius. Stradivarius. Very rare, very few in the world. They bring millions of dollars, millions of dollars. He was excited. Went to an appraiser. And more than one told him, this is not genuine, it's a fake. Oh, it says Stradivarius, but you can only get a few hundred dollars for this. It's a good violin, but you won't get millions for this. It isn't genuine. He learned a lesson, that fellow. He learned a lesson, and the lesson is this. Just because something has a label does not mean it is real. It's genuine. There are many labels today for ministries and so-called Christian endeavors. But be in the Word. Pray for discernment. And let us seek to do what we can to minister to people for the glory of God and for their well-being. Amen.